Welcome to our new video series on Chartwell, our magic font that helps you easily create charts with just a text box. In this first episode, I'm going to show you the basics of creating charts with Chartwell so you can see firsthand how easy it is. In fact, by the end of this, you'll probably never want to touch Excel again. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more advanced Chartwell techniques and tips. And let's dive in. We'll start with our most popular style, Chartwell Pies. Here I'm working in Adobe Illustrator, but any application that gives you access to OpenType discretionary ligatures should work. This includes Adobe apps like InDesign and Photoshop, as well as Figma, the web, and even the desktop versions of Word and PowerPoint. We've even seen a lot of people in academia and publishing using it in apps like LaTeX. There are some slight caveats for using Chartwell in different software, but I'll get to that later. Here are the basics. First, we're gonna select our type tool. And then we're going to type in a series of values, each separated by a plus. We'll start with 10, plus 30, plus 60. And next, let's select or change the font to Chartwell Pies. And now we can start coloring these however we like. We'll start with a yellow, then we'll make the next segment. Uh, blue, then we'll make the final one orange. And finally, activate discretionary ligatures. And there you have it. Easy as pie. Now, if you don't have this open type menu, you can find this by going to window, all the way down in type, and then open type. Now, one of the great things about Chartwell is that it's still just text. This means that if we need to make any changes to our data or our chart, all we need to do is deactivate the discretionary ligatures. And so now we can come in here and make changes to the data and then reactivate the discretionary ligatures. And now we have our new chart. And this basic syntax forms the foundation for most styles of chart. Well, very quickly, we can change the style of chart just by changing the font. So let's do that. So we've got areas, areas ranges uses a different uh, coordinate system. So it, that doesn't quite work, but bars work, bars 3D, histograms, lines. So you can color these however you like. Um, progress bars also uses a different syntax. Radar, rings, rows, scatter uses the coordinate system. And then finally we have steps. And going back to the areas ranges, this is what the syntax for that looks like. This is what we call the coordinate system. And so similar to our basic syntax, we're still separating our primary values with a plus, but then each value consists of two values or a coordinate. So the first value uh, designates the bottom of the, of the range and the second defines the top of the range and you separate these two values with a comma. And then you just piece together each one of those values with a plus. Other styles that use this coordinate system are scatter, arcs, and the ranged functionality for rings and bars. Progress bars and progress boxes, dots, squares, and stars. These use a different syntax, which I'm not gonna get into here, you can, if you're interested in these, you can check out the Chartwell user manual. This is available on the Vectra website, and this has lots of information about each style, including advanced functionality, alternate syntax for the web and Figma, and lots more. With the latest version of Chartwell, we've added the ability to use it in Figma and on the web. A bug in these environments prevented previous versions from working properly. We've developed an alternate syntax for these cases, making it now possible to use it in Figma, the web, or any other app that has had this issue. We're gonna make another video covering this in more detail, but I just wanted to show you how, briefly how it works for Pies. So here we are in Figma with the same syntax as before in Illustrator. To activate discretionary ligatures in Figma, we go to the type settings, the details tab, and then we scroll down to rare ligatures. This is what Figma calls discretionary ligatures. So when we activate this, you'll notice that 
This doesn't look like the pie chart we were hoping for. It breaks it out into three separate charts. Again, this is the bug that I was talking about. In order to get around this, we have to use our alternate syntax. So let's deselect the rare ligatures. And the way the syntax works is that after each value, we add an underscore and the sum of all previous values. So for the 30, the previous value is 10. So then 30 underscore 10, and then our third value, we'll add an underscore, and then 30 plus 10 is 40. And it's optional for the first value. I'm just gonna leave it out for now. And so now if we go back and turn on the rare ligatures, there it is, our beautiful looking pie chart. And there you have it, the Chartwell basics, which should have you up and charting in no time. If you don't already have Chartwell, you can get it on vectrotype.com. We'll be posting more guides and tips about Chartwell in the future, so be sure to subscribe to our channel for updates. If you have questions or tutorial requests, let us know in the comments. If you like this video, maybe buy a license to Chartwell or any one of our other fine typefaces on vectortype.com. See you next time.